All right, traders had a phenomenal green day today. The portfolio was up nearly 4% on the day. I had two back-to-back -back wins for a 20% return on the Aider stock put options. 20% plus back-to-back -back on these puts. Within this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you this gap fill trading strategy that I'm consistently using make to make money within the stock market. And we're also gonna be going over how to trade the best setups at the best prices. The market just flipped for the micro and it does look like we are going to continue to see a pullback now for the micro so it's time to adapt it's time to adjust and i'm going to be explaining to you the top stocks that i'm planning to buy some put options on heading into this week in my game plan from here so make sure you stay to the end of this video because it is going to prepare you to trade the best setups at the best prices. It is gonna give you those phenomenal money-making opportunities where you can really see some nice gains within the stock market. I wanna give a big shout out to the members within Trader Society as well. Some very nice gains today. Big shout out to Riser, very consistent, nice $100 gain. Continue to compound the account and that will add up. If you do not compound the account, then it's not gonna add up. Big shout out to Bobby. Bobby has been on a tear. His portfolio is up 45% on the day, man. Congratulations to you. My portfolio is up a little bit over 3% on the day um poor kid investing very very consistent he's been back testing and studying my strategy for years now he joined the program about a month ago his portfolio is up i think over um 100 plus now he joined three weeks ago i believe so big shout out to him he's given out so much value with in the chat room so make sure you guys are paying attention to what he's posting as well and big shout out to my guy um he opened up another brokerage account and he's trading for his wife as well and he ended up playing some spy put options using the gap close reversal strategy and he made a 233 percent return on the account in one single day and as you can see right here using the gap strategy once spy hit green and the previous closing price reacted as resistance he went heavy on the put options um big shout out to alex very very consistent so we're going to be going over these unique gap strategies that we're using to consistently make money within the market this is very simple and it works. It's highly effective. It gets you in at the best entries and it's a unique trend reversal gap strategy. I'm gonna show you how to use it both ways. This video is mainly gonna be focused on the put side because we do have some put option opportunities coming up. So um, we're gonna be going over Tesla, Spy, Apple, Neo, Facebook, AMD, Ford, NVIDIA, Ader stock, um, Macy's, AMC, Roblox, MULN, DraftKings. I'm going to be sharing with you when to buy to put options, when to buy to call options. In terms of my options trading strategy, I mainly, when I'm day trading, when I'm scalping, when I get in, I get out. It's usually within like 30 minutes to an hour. Um, when I'm trading these, I'm typically going with the closest expiration and I'm typically staying at the money. That's typically what I'm going with. I'm looking for the strike price that is aligned with the stock price. That's typically what I'm doing at the money or slightly in the money. That's how I prefer to trade these. So in terms of like what contracts to go with, those are the ones that I would go with as I'm going to be giving out the key levels within this video. So I'm um, you know, let's quickly go over Aider stock, right? Let's go over Aider stock right here. I'm going to give you the updated analysis and my plans moving forward with this stock. Um, I'm going to be recapping the trade that I made on Aider stock. As you can see, within my watch list, I prepared my team while the whole world was bullish on this stock today. I think it was up over 30% at one point. Um, you know, this was, it went red at one point during the day and we banked on these put options. You can see right here in the watch list, this was my updated plan at 4 44 a.m i told people eight or puts will be my number one setup today i'll keep you updated on my plan if you want to see me trade that plan in real time i'm gonna give you a gift the gift is going to be the second link in the description where you will be able to watch the live trading session that we had on Aider stock today, where you'll be able to see me, you know, trade the Aider put options and make a 20% plus return within an hour of trading. I'm going to leave that link down below. That is going to be that live trading stream that we did for members within Trader Society. So if you want to get a feel and if you want to check out what the live trading streams are like, we do them every single day at Market Open for members within Trader Society. That is going to be that second link down below in the description. If you are interested in joining Trader Society, that is going to be that first link down below in the description. All the information is explained on that first link for joining. Once you join, it's lifetime access and it's a one-time fee. So my plan was to keep it very simple. I saw a very good setup on Aider put options, and that's what I'm doing. I'm looking to trade the best setup at the best prices. I'm not trying to diversify. I'm not trying to enter multiple trades. I'm, I'm trying to make one good trade, one amazing trade. That's what I'm trying to do, right? And Aider's the one that I went with. There was other great setups as well. 
or you could have made a much bigger percentage return, but this was the setup that I like, and that's what I'm sticking with, right? The one that I feel most most confident and most comfortable in. So with that being said, these are alerts, and make sure you watch that live trading stream. It's a phenomenal education um, educational lesson. You can see right here, 9.44 a.m., I bought the Ader puts at 55 cents. The strike was $4 at the time. This was actually an out-of-money strike. This was like 10 cents out of money, I believe. And you know, I ended up selling half for 19% at 10.46 a.m. So I held it for an hour and two minutes, sold half for 19%. And then it spiked back to my initial entry. So it's a good thing I locked in half. And when it spiked back to my initial entry, I ended up buying more and I added at 56 cents, averaging my cost at even. And then I sold the rest for a 20% win. So I rinsed the puts. So in terms of the Ader trade recap, we're gonna go over that right now. And then we're also going to go over where I think Ader stock is heading for the time being. Then I'm gonna share with you how I'm planning to trade the best setups at the best prices. So make sure you stay to the end of this video. So why did I decide to buy put options on Ader stock? Why did I decide to short? Why was I bearish at 9 44 a.m., which was right here when I sent out the alert. If you were watching the live stream, I got in right here. Why did I decide to do that? So I'm looking at this chart, right? And I'm saying this is extremely overextended. This just gapped up from $2.33 and it gapped up again today. So it's second gap up in the row. Um, got to a high of 423. And I'm looking at the daily and I'm saying, Okay, we have a lot of key resistance, right? We have a lot of key resistance on Ader stock at $4 to $3.90. And whenever it hits 4 to 3.90, it's known for quickly going back to where it came from to fill the gap belows. So, I'm studying the chart and I'm saying, okay, we have this new gap to fill at 342. Can this realistically fill today? Can that gap fill strategy fill today, right? That's what that's what my expertise is in. That's one of my expertise with my strategy I have a very solid foundation in history of determining when a stock can fill the gap, right? So I have a very solid foundation of determining when this stock can fill that gap. And you can use this both ways. I'm showing you the short side right now. So if you can determine when a stock can fill the gap, from there, it's just about getting the right entry, setting the price target towards the gap, fill, locking in some profits at key support levels, right? So I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying, can this realistically fill that gap at 342? So I'm looking at the chart, right? This is the second day it gapped up. The previous highs yesterday were in the 390s. And what did it do? It struggled. It was struggling to break above 390s for the vast majority of the day. And it quickly sold off end of day to the 330s. So it went from 390s to 330s in one day. It struggled to break out, right? So I'm saying, okay, it just gapped up. Let's see how it reacts in the pre-market. I'm looking at the reaction in the pre-market. It gets too high of 413. So it's breaking out. You might think that's bullish. Well, guess what? It's actually faking out. You can see right here, it went from $4.13 all the way to a low of $3.55 in the pre-market. So what is that telling me? That's telling me that Ader stock is just having spikes. It's just having a little fake out. That's all it's doing. Why? Because it's not turning the previous resistance at 390 into a support level after it breaks out, which means it's still bearish, it's still struggling, and it's still going to be on track to go back to where it came from towards yesterday, which was in the 330s. And we have this new gap to go below 342. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying in the pre-market, man, this is this is looking like a great shorting opportunity, right? So when this pops back up towards resistance and forms those bearish trend reversal candlesticks for confirmations, I'm going to look to buy the put options. So um, that was the game plan to begin with. And then it hit 407 again, failed to break out. It popped one more time, had a little breakout. But as you can see, if it can't turn that $4, that $390 level into a support level, the reality of the situation is it's going to be a triple top fake out to fill that gap below. That's the reality of that situation. And if you just look at how this reacted, you have a very bearish candlestick. You have a hard sell off here to 398. You have lower highs coming in right here. You have very bearish trend reversal pins, these bearish wicks right here. And then once it cracks the support level, it's pretty much over. And then from there, it's consistently turning previous support into resistance on track to fill that gap below, right? So that's the play. That's how I was able to determine it was a gap fill strategy. It failed multiple times to turn the previous high into a support level. It formed multiple bearish candlesticks and multiple signs of fake outs, right? So I literally got in towards the top um, you know, when this stock was trading at like 410, I bought these contracts, the $4 strike. I literally bought these towards the low. I rinsed them back to back 
for a 20% plus win. You could see the timing on these was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I bought them right here at 9.44 a.m. So at 9.44 a.m., you could see right here at 9.44 a.m., this is where I got in when they were literally at 55 cents and then they shot up all the way to 70 cents and then they came back down to my initial entry and then you could see right here in terms of profit taking i locked in um half my profits at 10 46 a.m let's go to 10 46 a.m 10 46 a.m right here is literally towards the highs it's towards 65 cents right here i'm taking that 20 percent gain from my entry at 55 cents and then you can see right here um in terms of adding i'm adding at phenomenal prices too at 11:03 a.m is when i added back I added back at 11.03 a.m. Let's go to 11.03 a.m. That was literally the lows right at my initial entry to begin with, literally at the lows on these contracts. And then it ripped back up all the way to 76 cents. I sold for a 20% return. So um, yeah, in terms of profit taking, you know, I chose to lock in the first half. I believe it was right around here in the 350s when I locked in that first half, yeah, towards 1040. 10, 10 46 a.m right around here because it had it had nearly filled the gap and then when i noticed that this ripped back up to 380s and it's reacting as resistance i added more and then i played for the gap to fill below on the rest and locked in profits towards the 358 zone once again rinse and repeat that is the gap flow strategy on ader so where do i see this stock heading from here um the make it or break it level is gonna be i would say 340s you know this stock has very strong support right now at three dollars and thirty cents to three dollars and forty cents so in terms of when is this stock going to collapse when is it over when are the bulls completely fucked not just at resistance but at support the bulls will be completely fucked if it cracks 330 and reacts as a resistance level that's the reality of the situation it's held up on thin air all your support is in the 330s this is what i call you know being held up on thin air it's just a massive spike there's not much support your next support level is literally in the 250s there's another gap to fill below at 233 right so in terms of when's the next massive sell-off when's the key breakdown level um two three dollars in 30 cents 330 to 340 is your make it or break it support levels if it holds it's still micro bullish if it cracks and reacts as a resistance all these bulls will give back their profits that's the reality of the situation for those holding so um 330 is your make it or break it level if you're long on this that should be your absolute max risk just understand if you hold and it cracks 330 and reacts as a resistance this is going to see a massive sell-off because it's held up on thin air and there's no support until two 250s and there's a gap to the below 233 right so in order for this to continue to run and to continue to remain bullish it needs to stay above 330 but ideally like 340s um it closed at three dollars and 65 cents it's already gapping down spy looks bearish as well and spy will impact this as well so it's just not looking good for the time being on this stock if it can crack 350 and react as a resistance i might look to play some puts it's going to be a light position though because the volume is starting to fade and the contracts aren't going to be as ideal to trade when the volume fades so now let's get into the number one setup so that was the gap flow strategy for those of you in trader society we have so many video lessons going over the more advanced version of teaching that with multiple setups so um make sure that you watch those lessons within trader society that's how i started off trading by actually shorting small cap stocks you make a lot more with options but um i am going to get back into shorting small cap stocks with shares because you can do very well on that too you do have to pay a hard to borrow fees though that would be one of the downsides plus you can get squeezed and limited so you got to use like tighter stops so anyways let's get into um the top setups guys the market has flipped the market has seen a micro flip this this looks very very ugly this looks bearish um the dark the squeeze indicator worked once again you know when this turns dark blue on the squeeze and we're trading that key resistance spy is just known stocks are just known for selling off and have reversals you could see it triggered dark blue right here and then the next day it sells off phenomenal indicator it worked 100 percent so um i gotta give a big shout out again to this guy because he recognized the strategy today and he took fully advantage of it so for me i went with ader that was my main setup that i was focused on for him he was focused on spy that's his one setup right i'm not trying to trade multiple setups i'm just trying to feel i'm just trying to um go with the one that i feel is best the one that i feel most comfortable with and for me at the morning i was sold on the idea with ader but then spy had this crazy move and i wasn't focused on spy at the time i was focused on ader right because i'm trying to trade one one setup best setup at the best price but he absolutely killed it with the spy puts so in terms of what he did today he used the strategy right so in terms of the strategy it triggered dark blue which is a bearish indicator and like i tell you all the time guys just write this down 
when a stock or when SPY, when, when a stock is at a key major resistance level, right? So we know there's major resistance on SPY and this just had a massive overreaction from like, you know, 416 all the way to 460, just straight rally, right? It's due for some sort of pullback within time and it triggered dark blue on the squeeze, right? And with that being said, um, if you've been watching the videos on this buy, I felt the high was going to be at 464. So far, the high has been at uh, 462. So nearly, nearly towards the high was the prediction, you know, for the gap bill reversal here at 464.72. But um, anyways, if you see, you know, a stock have a massive run up, and then it has the first red day, so it's having the first red day, it had a massive run up, and it gaps down, so spy is gapping down. What you do is you wait for it to go back up to the previous closing price, the PCP strategy, right? So SPY is trading towards some key resistance level and prior to having an overreaction, to having a massive run-up, right? These are some of the keys. It gaps down and then you wait for it. You set that price alert, the previous closing price, this key level right here, it's gonna get you in towards the highs. And then once it reacts as a resistance level, once it starts breaking down, you buy the put options. So if I were watching the SPY at the time, if I were focused on the SPY at the time, um, I would have probably bought the puts right around here. This is probably where I would have gotten in. So initially I would have gotten squeezed. Um, I don't know, you know, if I would have exited or not. Maybe I exited for a small loss, maybe not. It depends on how much I was willing to risk on that particular trade. But if I got stopped out, I'll tell you what, I'm getting right back in as soon as it cracks this support right here. If I get stopped out, I'm getting right back in here when it cracks this key support. That's how I would have traded it. I mean, this is literally how he traded it. You know, so we're looking for the massive gap down, a stock that has a massive run up when it has the first red day with a nice gap down, a strong push up to the morning to fill the gap. Look for the reversal. See how it's reacting as resistance. It's forming this uh, gravestone doji nearly towards the highs right so when you see that doji towards the key resistance level you look to buy the puts when you see it cracking this key support here you look to buy the puts um and it had this strong move up and then just started forming these very bearish candlesticks so that was the gap close reversal strategy um on the spy and there is a gap to fill below on the spy at 443 so it's a gap close reversal and attempt to fill the gap below so that's the strategy that he used on the spy and with that being said, another thing that I want you to be aware of in terms of SPY, this is important as well, write this down. When you see SPY, like have this um, gap down, it doesn't have to be a gap down, but um, if you see it have a gap down and then the, this big push up, this big spike, if you get, if SPY is a big spike like that, especially if it gaps down and goes green, if you get a big spike like that and then the reaction is a big red candle, on the five minute chart, the overall direction, it tends to continue to go lower. So that's what I want you to keep in mind. In terms of the five minute chart on the SPY, if it has a nice rip up and then you get a massive red candle like this on the five minute, the overall direction, like you could see initially it went lower, then it popped back up, but the overall direction, it tends to go lower. And as you can see, it started to go lower. So I just want you to be aware of that with the SPY. That's a great trading tip for the SPY. If it has a nice spike and then it follows through immediately after that spike, a huge five minute red bar candle, it's typically going to go lower. So that's a nice quick scalping opportunity you could take advantage of as well. And as you can see, key support, strong wick. As soon as it cracks, it falls off a clip, 456.20. As soon as it cracks this, your next support level is at 455. So it's going to have a nice sell off, especially if it takes out 455. So um, in terms of the analysis on SPY and where do I think we're heading, this looks bearish it, it just doesn't it just really it flipped it really has flipped it's forming lower highs it, it flipped the micro has flipped i mean this is the beauty of being a trader it can flip flop all the time and you can just trade the flip flops if you're old in these men you're screwed man look at this it's flip flopping it's been flip flopping uh a lot um you have this nice massive run up here though but um, this is the beauty of being the trader. You can adapt. And when it flip-flops, you can flip-flop with it. People tell me all the time, well, you're flip-flopping on your analysis. I'm like, yeah, it's called adapting. I don't want to hold and lose money. That's what investors are doing. So um, with that being said, you know, there's a gap to fill below at 443.8. This looks very, very bearish. I think we'll see a micro reversal, see how SPY gaps up and then it fills the gap, has a reversal. My plan is to buy call options at 443.80. Um, as of now, this looks very, very bearish. And within time, 
you know, I think we're going to continue to see some downside now. It looks like the micro has flipped with the dark blue squeeze indicator. It works phenomenal. Like we could see some micro bounces, but like overall in terms of where SPY is heading, this, it doesn't look that bullish to me at the moment. Um, in terms of like chart direction and in terms of like prices you need to be aware of, I would say your key make it or break it level is going to be like 450. You have a lot of support at 450s. That's like you're going to be your key make it or break it level. If we crack 450, the next level is 448.66. Once we crack 448.66, that's when it really gets taken out and fills this gap towards 443.80. Now, in terms of upside potential, so those are the downside potential key levels. In terms of upside potentials, you have a lot of strong support here towards 449 to 450. Um, your new make it or break it level for upside potential, I would say, is this is going to be the zone from 451 to 453. 451 to 453. If it can break out and turn 453 into support, we're going to see another flip-flop, another trend reversal where SPY starts to rally back up. As long as it maintains under 453 to 451, SPY will continue to sell off with some time. I'm kind of on the sidelines at the moment for SPY. So um, let's get into some other opportunities. Tesla, it looks like Tesla has just micro flip-flopped as well. Whenever Tesla forms this red, big, bearish candlestick, and guys, this is why, for those of you who stay to the end of these videos, you truly do get it rewarded. Um, because look at this setup. We just triggered dark blue on Tesla. It's dark blue on the squeeze. We got the first red day right here. This looks very, very bearish. Um, Tesla had a nice gap close reversal. You could see a gap down just like SPY. It filled the gap, turned it into a resistance level, had a reversal. Now it's crashing, right? Tesla looks very, very bearish. I'm going to keep an eye on it tomorrow. If we're red, I'm buying puts. This just triggered dark blue on the squeeze. So I'm going to look to buy puts um, for just a quick scalp on Tesla, right? So um, the key level is going to be the previous closing prices. Those are going to be the new key levels. The previous closing prices, where they closed at today, if they gap down, I'm going to look for them, like I said, to turn into resistance levels. Wait for them to bounce back up. If they react as a resistance, it's going to be a great opportunity to buy the put options. That'd be the game plan in that situation. So that'd be the plan for Tesla. Look to write it down to about $1,072 for the target. Apple. In terms of Apple stock, um, I want to buy puts right here towards 178.44 that's where i want to play puts on this there's a gap to fill 178.44 it did just trigger dark blue on the squeeze the make it or break it support level is going to be 174.31 it looks like it's going to be on track to fill that gap so apple puts should continue to do well um 174.31 there's a gap to fill apple stock does like having gap fills but keep this in mind in terms of what it could be doing here you know there's a gap to fill right here it cracked right through and then it sold off hard the next day. And we are now dark blue on the squeeze. So if Apple stock cracks 174.31, very bearish, it's going to get crushed within the next two days. Puts will print. If it holds and breaks, if it holds and you know forms very solid support at 174.31, then it's going to start to pump back up, try to fill the gap. As of now, the market is looking micro bearish at the moment. So 174.31 is the key make it or break it level on Apple. That's where I'm interested in trading Apple stock. So that's the key level. So make it or break it levels means if if it reacts as a resistance, it's very bearish, going to have a hard sell. If it reacts to support, it's going to start to pump back up, right? Those are the make it or break it levels. That's what I'm giving the key trend reversal potential levels. Um, Neo is not looking that bullish at all. This can seriously have a big red day, especially with the nice move it's had up and what SPY is doing. We're going to see a gap fill on Neo to 2193. That's where it's heading very bearish on this one. And then if it cracks that 2193, within some time, we're going to be looking at a gap fill to 2105. So Neo puts are on the radar as well. So as you can see, I'm going to be put focused heading into this upcoming micro trading um, moves for the weekend. Another stock that I'm liking the idea on puts on is a uh, Facebook. Facebook had a very nice micro run up and you could see a lot of these stocks are having that same pattern. They're towards key resistance and they're triggering dark blue on the squeeze. And you know what's cool? That dark blue triggered on the squeeze yesterday for the spy. It triggered yesterday for the spy before everything sold off, before these stocks turned dark blue today on the squeeze indicator. It triggered yesterday. We had mentioned this in yesterday's video. For those of you who stayed to the end, you're well aware. Um, you know, so Facebook looks very, very bearish. 
We're at some key resistance right here, as you could see at 235. It just topped out, looks very bearish, dark blue on the squeeze. You have a gap to fill below right here at 224. And if you look at this candle, and if you look at this candle, it looks like it's gonna sell off and fill that gap, sell off and fill that gap. You see the pattern, you see what I'm showing you, man? This is the pattern. These are the strategies. This is going to work. These are going to print. It's going to be a phenomenal trading day, guys. I'm pumped. I'm fired up. I'm excited. You know, we get to adapt. When the market flip flops, we get to flip flop with it. We're not stuck holding any bags. We're not stuck holding anything, hoping for something to happen. The beauty of that trading situation is you can adapt, you can flip flop with the market, you get in, you get out, and we know right away what our results are going to be. And we stick to the plan, we stick to the strategy, man. This is the beauty of it. Rinse and repeat with these options. So um, Facebook looks phenomenal for puts. I'm going to look to buy some put options on that. So some of the top setups I'm seeing are Facebook put options. Um, Apple's going to be interesting. Neil's going to be interesting. I'm really liking Facebook though. And this is another, so write this down. This is going to be another key note. Sometimes in terms of like, you know, there's going to be some times where you're not sure what the market's going to do. You don't have a thesis on it because the setup isn't there. The candlesticks aren't what you'd be trading, right? There's no, there's no direction. There's no setups. There's no particular strategy. It's just doing what it wants to do. That's going to happen sometimes. One way you can kind of figure out um, where it's going to happen is you look at stocks that follow the market and the chart might look differently. And if you watched my video yesterday, I told you guys, I was very, very bearish on AMD and AMD is selling off hard now down 3% on the day. The puts printed very bearish on this one. Um, and you know, that really indicated that that could indicate that, you know, spy can pull back as well because AMD likes to follow spy. Those are just some things so like what I'm telling you is, you know, if you look at stocks that follow the spy, they can help you see things that might potentially happen that maybe the chart on spy isn't telling you that's some, some reads, right? Like, um, you know, AMD is at a key support level. Most of these stocks were at key resistance levels, right? But they like to follow each other. So you can see AMD the whole time has been reacting a strong resistance towards this key support level for three days in a row. So that was an indication that, man, stocks are probably going to sell off. So you can just use that back and forth, that type of mindset. It's like stacking all the trends, all the odds within your favor. Um, we went over that today within the chat. So um, Ford looks very, very bearish. Ford flipped. The key make it or break it level was 1666, and it turned it into resistance immediately, which is bearish. So um, we have this gap to fill on Ford at 1551. I'll see how it reacts towards 1551. If it cracks that, it's going to be very, very bearish. If it holds, we're going to see a nice pump up. If it cracks 1551, the next key level to be buying is at 1412. Stocks are looking very micro bearish at the moment. So um, those are the key levels I'm looking at for Ford. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, I'm waiting. NVIDIA looks very, very bearish, by the way. You know, we're still at key resistance. It's not the most bullish candlestick. I'm going to sit on the sidelines. I think there's going to be better plays. But this is not looking bullish. There is a gap to fill at 256.34. That's where it's heading. It's going to fill this gap, which is strong support with big upside potential. So I do want to see how it reacts at this 256.34. I'm telling you guys, this video that you're watching right now, these are A1 phenomenal trading setups, key levels. Like this is this is phenomenal. We're, we're trading literally at the best levels possible. So we're hitting a major support level on the video. I'll see how it reacts there. You know, if it reacts as a resistance, then it's going to get crushed, react support, then it pumps back up to fill this gap at 273.60, right? So I want to see how it responds to the 256.34 gap fill level. It could have a gap close reversal, or it could just continue to keep going down. We have to see how it reacts. That's going to be the key make it or break it level. 256.34 is going to be a phenomenal setup to watch. We went over Ader stock. Macy's looks very, very bearish. Whenever Macy's forms this candlestick right here to key resistance level, you could see it gaps down the next day, gaps down the next day, sells off. Macy's is looking very, very bearish. It looks like we're going to get a move to about 24.20 on that. Um, AMC. So as you know, the market is looking micro bearish at the moment. We, and AMC does like to follow the market when it goes down. So um, with this one, we got to wait a little bit. And one thing I do want you to be aware of is when a, whenever AMC does fill the gap, it does like to have reversals pretty quickly. But what I've noticed is it does go a little bit lower before having a reversal. So the updated plan is, since the market is looking micro bearish as well, there's going to be a gap fill at 2024, right? So in terms of key levels, AMC has a strong foundational history of having reversals when it fills the gaps, but I've noticed it does like to go a little bit lower before having a reversal. Plus with the way SPY is looking right now, it's not going to be the most ideal to just buy into the dips of these gap fills. So um, what would be some key support levels? 1970. 1970 
um, would be a key support level I'm keeping an eye on. If it cracks 1970, then 1870. I'm still interested in buying AMC and gonna be looking to possibly ride that out. I'm keeping a close eye on AMC. That's gonna be a phenomenal setup. We just gotta be careful with SPY. This is most likely gonna go lower than $20.24, we gotta see. But overall, AMC is really due for a spike. It's just gonna take some time. That's gonna be an A1 setup that I'm waiting for for the gap close reversal. You watch my previous videos. You're aware of how we're gonna trade that um roblox so this one's a little tricky it's not the most bearish candlestick but we are at some key resistance level i wish the candlestick was more bearish overall though i think within some time we're heading back to fill this gap at 4602 so roblox put options are going to be on the radar if it is red tomorrow going to look to play some roblox put options remember if these stocks are red tomorrow wait for them to go back to the previous closing price if it reacts as a resistance, see yeah, how all these stocks gap down, went back to the previous closing price. Once they break down, react as a resistance, that's when you buy the put options, when they're turning it into resistance, when they're breaking down, when they're turning to resistance, when they're when they're cracking key support levels, right? So that's the game plan for tomorrow. If they gap up, if the stocks gap up, then I'm waiting to see how they react when they go back down to fill that gap below, right? Um, if they go back down to fill that gap below and it was a small gap, there's a good chance as long as they crack and react as a resistance that the puts are still going to print. And then I'll look to get inputs towards key breakdown. So we got to see on that. Um, MULN, I gave out some downgrades in the chat, as you could see in the pre-market. Um, I always share with people what's on my radar and I give out price targets at 5.06 a.m., I downgraded MULN stock to a target of 235 by Thursday. As you can see, the stock is down 4% uh, and already dropped to 267, had a very nice gap close reversal at 286. So it now it now turned that key resistance level, that key support level at 287, that prior gap fill level into a resistance level. Very, very bearish. This is heading back to 235s. We were all over this. I get I give great commentary on this stock. And then um Ader, I downgraded that to 342 by tomorrow. That hit today. So those puts printed. That was at 506 a.m. So um in terms of MULN, this is micro bearish. It's forming lower highs. It's turning, it's having gap close reversals. It's doing this. This is what it's doing. You see the pattern? It's doing the same thing. It's on track for 330s within some time. So I'm bearish on that for the micro. Draft canes will be the last setup. This looks very, very bearish. Definitely something I'm interested in. So um, once we can crack, there's a gap fill here. It just filled the gap at 1905. When DraftKings can crack 1905 and react as a resistance level, we're looking at a pullback to about 1865, which is a new gap. If that cracks, then we're looking at another nice pullback to $18. So um, 1865 is gonna be the target for now. We gotta see how it reacts when that gap fills. I am looking to buy puts before that. DraftKings looks very, very bearish with this red candlestick coming in here. So um, I would say the top setups that are on my radar in terms of the put options, um, DraftKings is on the back burner. Roblox is getting interesting in terms of like full fucking confidence setups um, for put options. I would say, you know, I'm liking the idea of Apple. You got to be careful though, because there's a gap to fill above here and there is a gap to fill below here. So it could have a reversal there. So you got to be careful, but it did trigger dark blue on the squeeze. Got to be careful with that one, but that's on my radar. Um, I'm liking Tesla as well. Got to be careful with that one as well. But I mean, the ones that I really like, let's see, Roblox looks decent as well. I would say Facebook. Facebook is really due for that pullback. I would say Facebook is going to be like, especially with this move right right here with what I'm seeing in this gap bill. I would say right now, Facebook is going to be like my favorite one in terms of like confidence of the setup, you know, playing out in our favor. I like Facebook puts. That's going to be one of the number one uh, for sure. Going to keep an eye on Apple. I also potentially like the idea of Neo. So the ones I'm keeping a close eye on for tomorrow will be um, the top setups will be Neo, Facebook, um amd not too interested in it already pulled back a lot but it will go lower so i would say the top ones right now facebook towards resistance neo towards resistance apple towards that key breakdown um tesla towards that key breakdown roblox towards resistance and um yeah those would be like the top ones that i'm really watching right now in terms of call options the only one i'm really interested in at the moment is uh amc and if nvidia can hold that key level if not then it's going to be a put keep an eye on nvidia that's going to be a very interesting reaction to watch when it fills this gap you got very strong support make it or break it 256.34 top setup there so um yeah that's going to wrap up 
today's um you know market recap the trade recap and you know trading the best setups at the best prices we're gonna have a phenomenal day coming up coming up folks here we're gonna have a phenomenal day so if you do want to be a part of trader society i'm telling you guys we're gonna absolutely crush it um you know i do best in terms of like trading the put options for sure and we are currently in a situation where puts are going to be on track to print and i see some phenomenal put setups so if you do want to join trader society it's going to be the first link down below in the description once you join you get instant lifetime access and um you know in terms of what's included it's all explained in the first link down below in the description you get access to live trading streams every single day at market open if you want to see what that's like that's the second link in the description it'll show you what the live trading session was like from this morning you also get access to the recordings of all those live streams where you can go back and watch right so you get to watch me trade live you get to learn how i'm trading these stocks how we're trading these stocks to consistently make money within the market live you get to see the portfolio you get to see the open positions um you get to see the live trading education there's nothing like it there's nothing like it out there where you can learn if you want to learn price action you have to trade price action and you can watch someone trade price action and they can point you in the right direction and you can learn how to trade price action through them as well as through your own experience as well so that'd be the best way to learn that not by watching like a trade recap or something like that that's helpful but you gotta see them do it live and that's you know the point of these live trading streams at market open is to show you how i trade live on a regular basis and that's what i do i master the market open the first hour i'm typically done um, and then from there, it's just, you know, setting price alerts, finding new opportunities and looking for swing trades towards power hour. That's mainly it. So I mainly day trade the first hour of market open. I'm typically done make make a couple of percent on the portfolio, compound it and call it for the day. So, um, that's going to be the first link in the description. You do also get access to the chat room where you get access to me and the members. You could ask as friends on discord. You could send us private direct messages. Um, you can also post your trades in there and you can give analysis within the chat room as well. And you do get access to the video lesson library. That's where you're going to learn all of the gap trading price action um, trading strategies, right? Within Trader Society in the video lesson library, you get access to the gap method trading strategies, the price action analysis trading strategies, the gap close reversals, the gap fill strategies, how to trade these both ways, long and short, how to trade the options. Um, you do also get access to the videos on mindset and psychology to trading and risk management and position sizing there's a lot more to it of course you're going to get the stock analysis in real time the real time trade alerts within the chat room and on um, the watch list the watch list are going to prepare you every single day in the pre-market um if i see something on my radar if something looks good i'm going to give you the real time analysis before the market opens and then i'll share with you my thoughts if something comes around um you know as the market is um you know trading from 9 30 to 4 p.m so I'll always keep you up to date I'll always send you the price alerts i'll always prepare you to trade the best setups at the best prices if you are interested in becoming a self-sufficient trader an independent trader who is capable of trading on your own, who's gonna be consistently profitable within the market, it is possible. We have people who are doing it. We have a lot of people making back the cost of trader society within their first week. It's definitely possible. Some people have made it back before they even joined trader society. Um, we have a couple of traders consistently making five figures a month. We have, we have two traders right now that are making over six figures a month. One of them has made over seven figures this week. It's absolutely insane. He's going to be doing a 1K to 100K challenge within the chat room soon. So um, yeah, if you do want to be a part of Trader Society, I'm telling you guys, we have a great team and we're laser focused on trading this simple gap trading strategy. We're not all over the place. We're dialed in on one simple strategy that is consistently making us money. Um, and if you want to be a part of it, it's going to be that first link down below in the description. I will see you guys at the live trading stream tomorrow at market open thank you so much for using your time to invest into your education